presentation. You should have a new spiral bound budget book. It is the exact same as your three ring binder. If you made notes in your three ring binder for tonight and tomorrow night, you can obviously use a three ring binder, same thing. We put a yellow piece of bonded paper within your budget to act as a ruler. We had, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm not sure if we had trouble finding seven rulers or, uh, but Jessica and I decided maybe just a bonded piece of paper serves the same purpose. So that's in there as well. Or again, I kick off the presentation. If I don't make it abundantly clear during the presentation, I wanna thank the staff for their support in creating the recommendation. Ultimately, this is my recommendation. It's one of the major tasks of the city manager but again, without the help of finance and all the department heads, it's a culmination of all their hard work that we're presenting uh, our recommendation tonight. So with that, probably hard to see on that screen, but hopefully you can see the screen in front of you. This is the chart that's at the beginning of your budget book, a couple pages in, it's chart three. And the key component in this chart is this shows the city and port tax levy increase. So you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, uh, our recommendation tonight is that the city and port levy 9.3%. Uh, so that's a uh, rounding up from the total that was 3.26, but for purposes of tonight, it's 9.3. And that is our recommendation for the for the year over year uh, tax levy increase. So just a reminder, uh, just a little bit about the budget process that leads up to really the ultimate recommendation of that 9.26 or 9.3% levy, levy increase. We start with a CIP uh, at the department head, head level. So that's the capital improvement plan. We present that to council. Uh, for review. Uh, shortly following that uh, process, we have the department heads submit the requested uh, budget, which includes can include capital projects and operational costs. And at that point, if we were to include every single project in the capital improvement plan and all the department requested uh, operational costs, we would end up having a 162.58% levy increase. And I included that on this slide just really as context. So that's really the starting point. And from 162.58%, we work our way down to what's recommended tonight. And I just wanna show this as an illustration of some of the work that's done, again, between the CIP being presented to you and the recommended budget tonight. So those numbers that, are, that follow the city manager's recommendation is that 72.8% uh, was the second levy increase that we looked at. At this point, we added revenue, decided to move a lot of capital projects to ARP funding, which you'll see here in a minute, and significant reduction in capital projects. Then from 72.8% to 33.9%, uh, Chief Williams and I met with the county to discuss the LEC rent, which was lowered. Uh, depreciation was taken out of the general fund and street reconstruction was reduced. Going down to 24.4%, we made recreation, parks, building maintenance projects were eliminated that were not in the capital project. At 13.2%, we reduced employee service contingency by nearly 700,000. You'll hear more about that in a minute. Uh, 10.43, we reduced more operational costs, and that's where we got to 9.26. I've added uh, another line in there to say that technically the budget's at 9.46, because between tonight and a few days ago, we heard that the county is not increasing our funding for senior advocacy, and so we had uh, budgeted that amount, that increase within the budget. So we are technically at 
So as you can tell, it's a working document up until you tentatively approve or until truth and taxation. Uh, so we have made uh, that adjustment internally. Again, that's not within your books because of that change. So, okay. And always, if you have questions as we go, certainly let me know. Uh, this, <clears throat> excuse me. This next slide shows uh, the amount of total taxes payable from 2014 to 2023. And again, um, it's important to note that our budget for operational costs as it relates to the tax levy is a year over year calculation. And part of the reason why we do that, and you can see the last three years, we were at 9.3 million, 9.8 million, and then 10.8 is really so that we, are, we don't have a reliance on our reserve funding and that we're budgeting our actual operational costs. And you saw a very similar chart to this when Baker Tilly presented about it's, it's important to stay in balance with your budget, which means tax levy increases, getting your operations to the right uh, location in a sense, and then it's being consistent with um, your budgeting processes over the next couple of years. We are, however, reliant on LGA, and you can see that in this chart as well. Um, from 2021 to 2023, I would say we've had incremental increases in LGA. I would note that we are getting an increase in LGA from 22 to 23. It's a 0.048% increase. So it's a little bit, it's basically a half of 1% increase in LGA. It equates to $48,750. But again, we're reliant on LGA to the tune of 10.3 million. We want to take some time tonight to bring back what I think we historically have called Dieter charts. Uh, Dieter Milamanka was a council member that uh, requested years ago for staff to illustrate how the allocation of property taxes is, is spread out in, a, in any given year. So when you look at this chart, you'll see that the largest amount is in with the general fund. So 73.4% of the $10 million we levy is again in the general fund. I won't go through all these. I think it's always important to ask what's the largest and what's the smallest. Again, largest is general fund. And by the way, that also makes up 73% 73 also makes up um, our employee service costs across all the departments. But again, that same number. So about 73% of all of our costs within all of our funds make up are made up by employee services. The point six is capital projects for 2023. So we have, again, just a little over half percent point. For capital project, that includes two police vehicles this year. So when you look at that 73.4% of all the taxes we collect, it's broken down, that general fund is then broken down into these categories, 28% to police, 20% to fire, public works is at 17.8%, park maintenance 11.3%, We've got economic development at 3.7, uh, general government at 15.6. That includes the city manager, HR, mayor, council, commissions, elections, city clerk, uh, finance, city attorney, building maintenance, and central communications. And the other 3.1% is our contingency. So you get, to go see, you get to a good, at least visual of where those general fund dollars are going. This chart, in a sense, is a similar to um, how we allocate or the use of our local government aid. So again, largest category is general fund at 82.7%. Uh, capital projects is 0.1 of our LJ is going to capital projects. At that 0.1% includes Baker Street and 
our sidewalk re reconstruction project. We did not break down general fund use for LGA, but you get a good snapshot then of the larger categories of how we use the LGA. Mentioned a few times about the capital, and pro capital improvement projects that are within the 2023 budget. Just again, this is more of a reminder uh, for council about the CIP process. The CIP in full is presented to you in July. And again, it's revised during the budget process. And usually that, that's done internally based on the priorities and what we feel we can recommend for the 2023 budget. Um, it, it is uh, presented to the planning commission annually uh, in August for review. So they actually see it after the council uh, sees it. The staff, again, as I mentioned, finalizes the CIP based on this budget process. And again, just a reminder, it's a planning document. So future years or projects should not be considered adopted or finalized. Your, your budget process sets the 2023 budget and in turn then sets the priorities for the 2023 uh, capital improvement plan. Again, it's a planning document. The planning commission then does do a final review and they do a final review of that CIP plan for appropriateness as it relates to the comp plan to make sure the projects are in that are in the CIP meet and match the comp plan. An example of this is that the community center has been in the CIP for the last several years at $5 million. And that's when we were initially looking at the community center at the East Rec with the Friendship Center. The fire department uh, renovation at Central Fire has been in the CIP for 10 plus years and that's safe. So again, you, you, don't, you do not approve or finalize projects through the CIP, it's a planning document. The other piece that I want to mention as a planning document, the CIP, is that the CIP is one tool that is used in our rating calls. And so when we go out to bond and a bond agency is, and we go through that rating process, this is one piece of, of document or tool that they look at. So we try to capture any future projects that would be in the CIP. And that's why it goes out several years uh, because it's used in that rating process as well. Again, I've mentioned a couple of times now again about capital projects. And you saw in the previous slide, we made a large adjustment to the budget by taking out a lot of the capital projects. In some ways, I would say that we're going to be able to do some of those capital projects due to our allocation of ARP funds. Um, so tonight uh, we'll go over, and I'll say it relatively quick, the ARP recommendations but know that these recommendations come back to you after the budget process for final approval. So these aren't tied to the budget, but the ARP items that we're recommending, some of them were tied to our budget process as far as capital projects were reduced out of the budget and categorized as ARP recommendations. So I'm gonna go through them really quick. Um, if there's questions about them, tonight certainly is appropriate while we go through it or after the presentation to talk about them. But again, important pieces, you, it comes before you for final adoption and final use. So uh, we have recommended 180,000 go to mental health initiatives. We have uh, 26,000 to election materials, 8,500 for city council upgrades, 60,000 for city hall security, we have a series of equipment purchases that include replacement of a truck in public works, uh, replace a bobcat in park maintenance, and a, a vehicle in fire. We are proposing the housing rehab program at 240,000. We are proposing uh, third street beautification at 99,500. We do have some required hazmat training for fire. You have previously approved the next series of items through a previous council action. That, that's a, the SCBA, the face pieces, the turnout gear, and air bottle replacement at fire. 
We're recommending that we use ARP funding for the sandblasting and tuck point at the library for 100,000. We are recommending that we allocate another 285,000 for the band shell upgrades. If you remember correctly, that ARP, one of the categories that was eligible was lost revenue. Uh, Park Rec was one of the funds that suffered the most through the pandemic. So we are recommending 250,000 go into uh, the Park Rec fund simply as lost revenue. We are proposing that Madison Playground uh, see some upgrades to that play space at 69,252. Uh, you can see there that it's an odd, not round number that we use Madison School and the Third Street Beautification as a rounding tool uh, for the 2.9 million that we've received. And certainly last but not least, the next project ties into my next slide. We are recommending that the Masonic Temple HVAC that $1 million of that $2 million project uh, be allocated from ARP funds. On the next slide, you'll see the other half of this, of the Masson Temple HVAC recommendation. So we are recommending an equipment certificate in the 2023 budget uh, that includes uh, the City Hall elevator, a repair to the City Hall HVAC, LED lighting at City Hall, uh, police radios, a fire engine, three dump or plow trucks, an upgrade to LED lighting at Bud King. Again, the Masonic Temple HVAC at a million, Friendship Center, LED lighting at 5,000, and elevator or library elevator replacement at 164,000. So these items qualify as equipment. If the council would provide tentative approval of the budget over the next two nights, then the process to issue the certificate would come to city council likely in October for authorization. And that actually would help us uh, specifically if you agree that that would help us with the with the bidding process for the Masonic Temple HVAC. Goal there would be out for bid with construction schedule winter, early spring, so that building is uh, ready to go by next summer. That would be the uh, hope. Um, again, these items are up for discussion. This is what we're recommending. I think the key point here is that the we are recommending issuing 3.1 million in equipment certificates and the debt service is estimated to be flat, which I'll discuss here in a second. So the 2022 debt service and 2023 debt service stays level or flat. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, Chad, could you please remind me on the mental health initiative or re-explain -re that? Thanks. Yep. So we are uh, recommending that 180,000 uh, be set aside for mental health initiatives. The 180,000 is, is really not a magical number. It was based on the original ART recommendation of $90,000 per year. Um, specifically, uh, Chief Williams and staff have met with Hiawatha Valley Mental Health, with Winona Health. We still have some work to do with Winona County. Uh, we still need some discussions there. And we are trying to um, find an approach that best addresses mental health issues within the community. And at this point, we feel that the ART program is not the direction we'd like to go because of the crisis response team and our discussions with Hiawatha Valley Mental Health. In our discussions with Winona Health, um, we, we feel that as a community need, there may need to be uh, more services or funding provided for, um, for lack of a better word, directly after a crisis or shortly after a crisis. And that's really where the gap in this community, we feel, at least when talking to these partners, uh, we feel there's uh, potential to, again, from a community-wide standpoint, address some mental health issues. Is this wages or programming or assets? Help me. So Mayor and Council, we haven't 
yeah, we haven't determined whether it's employees, services. Um, my concern with this line item is the long-term impact and long-term needs with one-time money. Um, and that was something that Baker Tilly has, uh, if you can remember back to that presentation, one of their key items was if you would use ARP funds for a long-term initiative with one-time money, then know that if you'd like to keep that service or you want to continue to be supportive of that service, at some point you're going to need to budget that 180 within uh, an annual budget. Um, and again, you'll see what 180 is an impact here in a few minutes, but um, that is the concern with uh, this initiative. And again, in summary, primarily Chief Williams and staff are really working with those entities to, in a, in a sense, dollars toward the greatest need. Chad, I have a question yep. regarding uh, park rec loss revenue. Can you talk about that a little bit? So during the pandemic, um, park rec lost revenue. Um, we certainly at the same time reduced our expenditures during the pandemic. So, you know, the pool wasn't open, but, you know, we didn't run full chemicals. So you see the balance. We didn't, you know, we didn't receive revenue, you know, for gate revenue at the pool, but we also didn't run a whole series of chemicals. So we tried to balance lost revenue with the expenditures that we were also doing within park rec. But we were imbalanced. We, we, there was a loss of revenue that surpassed the expenses that we paid out still to keep operate some of the operations uh, still functional during that, during COVID. So the 250 is really our recommendation for what we felt we lost during the pandemic to help the recreation fund. Um, it's not going to cover everything, um, but we think that's the correct amount for what was happened during the pandemic. So basically this will be used to pad the bank account as opposed to repairing the pumps at the pool or this, you know, repair type items or both, or how would that, how are we looking to spend that? So it's simply going to the park rec fund to help their yep. cash balance. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, there, there would be no, in a sense, no expense right. with like the revenue coming in, there would not be an expense going out. It would just simply uh, support the cash balance of the rec fund. The expense already happened, didn't it? So our expenses happen, like I said, so we're over. This is, again, just to help the cash balance. Right. Backfilling. Um, would you uh, just explain why, I already know, but would you explain why City Hall Elevator, which is, I believe, just a repair, uh, is more expensive than a replacement of an elevator at the library? So the primary reason between those two is that the library is not what we would call like a service elevator. So if you can think of the library historic building, the, you know, the elevator shaft is narrower than City Hall. City Hall elevator has two door component. You can go to the front side of City Hall, back side of City Hall. It also goes to three floors, library two, three, three floors. Um, it's, that, it's that service elevator and size component where replacement of a full elevator ends up being less than replacing components of a service elevator. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the ARP stuff? Okay, thanks, Jeff. So I mentioned uh, on the last slide that we are recommending a equipment certificate uh, for those items, 3.1 million. The idea here is to keep debt service level. So we do have debt service coming off the books. Uh, that was for equipment. A uh, prior equipment certificate in 2015 that included a fire engine and Bud King. Those are the primary projects. That debt service is coming off. Keep our tax levy from bouncing. We then are recommending uh, keeping that debt service level. In a bit of a sobering sense, our 2023 expenses also decreased. I wanted to mention that. Uh, we did do some decreases in staff. 
Uh, one is in the recreation department, we are reducing one full-time equivalent. So with the transition um, of myself out of that office and the other transition components that we've done within the department, we are recommending a reduction in one position. Community development in 2022 as part of the $590,000 reduction, uh, lost one full-time equivalent in community development. We are not, uh, that reduction is not being filled within this 2023 recommended budget. Street department, same in the 590,000 reduction, that position is not filled. 2023 budget, we proposed a deputy clerk, city clerk. We ended up not budgeting that with the exception of a part-time position that's funded through transit. So not fully funded in 2023. And if we take our full-time equivalents at the library, it's been reduced by 0.5. We also made uh, uh, reductions in supplies in our general supplies, equipment, and contracted services. So we did make some reductions in the 2023 budget over 2022. We also have increases in expenses in 2023. And again, these are year over year expenses. And these one, these items are really related to inflationary costs that we're seeing. So we're not immune to inflationary costs. Uh, of course, we have gas and fuel increase prices, a workers comp increase for a second straight year. Property insurance has gone up significantly. Electrical costs are up right around 7%. Natural gas is estimated around 17%. So we do have some increases uh, based on inflationary costs. We also have year over year operational costs. So we are recommending that we budget depreciation in the recreation and library fund. And I'll take a minute here to just explain what that means and what our concept is for the next several years, because it, it, it's a multi-year process in order to be successful. The recreation fund and library fund tend to be cash short. We just talked about that a little bit. And when projects like library masonry project comes forward, where do we take 100,000 or how do we budget 100,000 for the masonry work at the library? Previous years, we weren't uh, budgeting depreciation in those accounts and on the front end, uh, including the appreciation in in the recreation and library under this example would mean that if we continually do this for the next five years, in five years and six years, maybe there'll be a roof issue at the library. There may be a component that's mechanical. Uh, there may be the dome, uh, the artwork. Uh, there might be some restoration costs within the library. And if we budget that depreciation over the next five years, we would come back to you and say, we've got an issue with the roof or with the canvas, with a dome, but we've been putting aside this appreciation. There's actually a, a cash fund balance that we would recommend using to cover that cost. But it takes a couple of years to build that up. It's not gonna happen overnight. And again, specifically with Park Rec, a recreation fund being cash short to start with, it's a several year process. We are seeing general equipment costs go up. I did put accessible government here because I think it's it, it's not a large cost, but I think it's noteworthy that when we provide Zoom, when we provide other public input uh, processes, we use software for public input, that don't, we, don't, they have associated costs. It, it doesn't happen without some staff time. It doesn't happen with some additional staff. You've already approved a part-time position in our IT department so that uh, can assist staff and yourself with that, with these pieces of Zoom and other components that certainly the community has asked for. We are seeing year to year operational costs increase as it relates to ID fraud. I won't go into a lot of details here, but obviously cybersecurity is a major issue for local governments. We're not immune to that. And so we put some safeguards within this budget to help with IT fraud. Our expenses have increased, but again, I wanna make sure because obviously the council has, in a sense, uh, illustrated to staff and, and, and certainly in, in our financial statements year over year that there are no general fund reserve dollars used to balance this budget. So there, we are not going to the general fund reserve. We balance the budget with a 9.26 of the increase on the revenue and expense side. 
On the revenue side, we are uh, recommending some increases as well. Uh, Brian DeFrang will go over this maybe a, a little bit more in detail if you'd like during his presentation, but we are suggesting a 3% increase to fixed water rates, a 14 cent increase to variable water rates, a $5 per quarter availability charge for wastewater and a 3% variable wastewater rate. All the departments will come back with uh, their fee increases that are within this budget in September. That's our normal process uh, to do that with council. Okay, switching gears a little bit. Um, when we talk about a 9.3% levy increase, it, it doesn't directly correlate to the bottom line of your property tax statement. So you, Citizens get their property tax statement in the mail from the county. We're going to run through a couple examples here in a minute. Um, I think initially some might say, oh, wow, the, the city's raising my taxes again at 9.3%. But that tax levy is only one factor in the overall property tax increase, or in some cases, you're going to see a decrease. And there are several factors uh, that impact your overall property tax that you pay. And one is tax base. If we continue to increase the tax base, which we have been, uh, that's a factor. Of course, the tax levy is another factor. The market value of the property is another factor. And of course, in your total tax bill, other taxing authorities like the county or school district play a role as well. And so what we'd like to do at this time is um, these may be a little bit difficult to see on the screen. It's tiny print, but I'll try and kind of point uh, and then reference. So what we did is we pulled a, a Winona County tax statement for a property that has a value of $121,300. This is what, uh, this is basically what a resident would see when it comes in the mail. We've redacted the property information. These are public statements, but I didn't want to certainly be here in a public presentation talking about a specific house, but they are public, but we redacted the property information. So a couple of things that I want to point to, and maybe if you just want to turn to the big screen behind you, um, it shows right in this area, the 2021 property value in this home, for example, it was 115,700 in 2021. Market value increased to 121,300. These yellow bars on your tax statement show what your city portion of the taxes were. So in this home value of 121 in 2021, this property had taxes for that that were directly related to the city at 373.66. Their 2022 amount increased to three. 393.83, which was a year over year increase of $20 and one cent. So their year to year increase on a monthly basis was $1 and 67 cents. It's important to note this. In these examples, this was a 5.2% levy increase for the city's portion. But again, those other factors are why uh, this homeowner was paying $20 more year over year. Tax base, uh, in this case, likely help this individual not be $23 or $24. Um, and again, market value certainly was a component in why they're at a $20 increase. Back to the Dieter charts. If I'm a resident and I have a home value of 120,000, again, really close to the 121 example I just gave you, the annual city tax in this case is $424 per year. Very important for me to mention that with these charts, it's showing the 2022 market value, the 2022 tax base, but the 2023 tax levy, because we don't have the information yet on the 2022 market value or the 2022 pack tax base. You can see from this slide, though, that that homeowner resident value of 120,000 is paying an estimated monthly tax of $35.33 to the city. $29.20 goes to the general fund, five cents goes to capital projects, 
et cetera. So you kind of see the breakdown in a, in a Dieter chart format where their tax dollar is going. Even further, if we want to continue the theme of the Dieter charts, here's where that general fund amount is going on a monthly basis. Again, $29.20 estimated monthly tax goes to the general fund, which includes $8 to police, five, well, $6 to fire, five to public works, $3.30 to park maintenance, $4 to general government, and about a dollar to economic development. Uh, this tax statement is a home value at 170400 the reason why we show this is that the average home value in Winona currently is 169.9. So we got pretty close with 17400. So in this one, again, just if you can want to look at the screen behind you, the 2021 market value of this home was 156,300. 2022 market value increased to 17400. 21. City tax was 56195. 2022 tax 61562. This property saw a year over year increase of $53.67 or a $4.47 increase monthly. I'll go over this one as it relates to the Port Authority. The Port Authority is the second bar on this tax statement. In 2021, this property paid $28.05. In 2022, $30.01. That's a year to year increase of $1.96 or 16 cents per month. And again, this is based on that 5.2% levy increase. This is the last one where we'll show the Dieter charts before I get into some other valuations. This one again, $170,000 home. Estimated monthly tax is 5592. And again, this is using 2022 market value, 2022 tax base, 2023 levy. Eight cents is going toward capital projects, $2.97 to street reconstruction, 38 cents to the airport, $4 to recreation, 226 to the library. Again, 4622 to general fund. Again, if we break down the Dieter chart and how that general fund is broken down. Of the 46.22, again, $13 roughly to police, nine to fire, eight to public works, five to park maintenance, seven to general government, and a dollar seventy to economic development. Wanted to show you, and again, I'll kind of walk through these relatively quick because they're you'll see a theme here. They're generally the generally you're gonna, I hope, catch the theme here. 2021 property value of this home was 259,000. So we're just showing a value of a home that's a little bit more than 170. In 2022, their estimated market value increased to 284,200. This home value saw a year over year increase of $99. Uh, primarily due to their market value and a year to year monthly increase of $8.29. They saw a year to year increase in the Port Authority of $3.65 and a 30 cent monthly increase on this home. We also wanted to show you some other valuations. We, we use a rental property. Uh, this rental property in 2021 had an estimated market value of 136,400, a slight market value increase to 147,400. Their year-to-year -year tax increase was $47.40. Again, that comes out to a monthly increase of $3.95. Their Port Authority portion of their tax statement was 3577 in 21. 3725 in 2022, which equates to a year over year increase of $1.48 or a 12 cent increase on this rental property. We also wanted to look at some larger properties. This is a commercial property. And again, their 2021 estimated market value was $1,746,700. Their estimated market value increased to 1.8 million. Uh, they saw a year-to-year increase of $528.92 or a year-over-year -year monthly increase of $44.08. 
their port authority year over year increase was nine dollars or a year over year monthly increase of 75 cents for this commercial property. Uh, this one is interesting to me. This is an industrial property. Again, their uh, 2021 market value was 838,000. Uh, their 2022 estimated market value went up to 863,400. Their year to year increase for the city portion of their taxes went up $118.54. Now, the way to say that is their year to year monthly increased by $9.88. The Port Authority portion, this is where uh, we'll hopefully draw some correlations. Their 2021 tax was $335.89. Their 2022 tax was $333.83. So, this industrial property saw a decrease in their taxes of $2.06 or $0.17 cents per month. So again, market value for this industrial property increased slightly. Their tax levy went up by 5.2%, and they actually paid a decreased amount with Port Authority. And part of that is because our, we grew the tax base. That's one qualifier that uh, impacts the tax statement. And the last one that I wanted just to show is uh, we, we redacted the property information, but it's Port Authority property. This is property that the Port Authority owns. And their 2021 market value was 872,600. Their 2022 market value stayed the same. So there was no increase in market value on this parcel of property. Their year to year city taxes decreased by $96.04 or $8 monthly. Their own Port Authority property tax, which they have to pay, decreased $12.87 for the year or $1.07. This is also an excellent example of market value stayed the same, 5.2% tax levy increase, and their annual payment decreased. So market value study, a tax base grew, helped bottom line, of their, of their city portion of taxes. So again, just to illustrate that 9.2 doesn't necessarily always mean 9.2. It's not, you take, you do, taking the bottom line of your tax statement when it comes in the mail and saying I'm paying 9.2% more is inaccurate. There's some factors that determine uh, where that money goes or how that money's allocated in your taxes. Okay, uh, this chart is really to show incremental tax levy increase. And again, theme 9.2%, understand that that's a high amount. It's um, certainly a percentage that we uh, are above kind of our standard. But what this chart shows is what I call the slim margins to raise a tax levy. So we've got a $61 million budget. We've got 10.8 of that coming to coming in as taxes. And if we want to raise the tax levy by 1%, we would spend $89,910. Another way to say that would be to have no operational increases. Everything stays flat from 2022. There's no employee service increases and we fixed the hard courts at Sobieski. That'd be it. That's across the entire city, that's all we would do. At 2%, if we did no operational increases, no employee services, no Sobieski, but increase, increase street reconstruction and purchase one tree crew truck, we could spend 197,820 or 2%. Last example. If we did a 3% levy increase, we'd have no operational increases, no employee service increases, no Sobieski, no truck, but the city budgets appreciation for recreation and library and increases the street reconstruction program. And we would spend 296, 730. Again, I just do this to show that the, the, the margins are so small uh, for a tax levy increase. And again, we hear it, okay, 9.2%, oh boy. You know, that's a large tax increase, but again, the, the amount of money and the projects and services we provide are, are really 
incremental. If we want to decide to do capital projects, provide the services, retain employees, then we incrementally need to increase the tax uh, levy appropriately and consistently. So speaking of retaining employees, this chart shows the number of FTEs dating back to 2001. And I wanna point out a couple things. Our high for number of employees was in 2007, we had 192 employees. Our low point was uh, in 2014, we had 167 employees. And that was, low point is an understatement that was right in the middle of the recession and we did significant layoffs. Uh, we added back employees through, uh, coming out of the recession and we hit again in, in the sense a high of 181 employees in 2021 and since have reduced in 2023 to 174. I show this for two reasons. Uh, the service first is the service demands of the public have not decreased since 2001. Matter of fact, I would argue that they've increased. The number of employees to meet that demand, you know, is now getting back to pre-recession times at 174. Second reason is one could make the assumption we should cut staff to assist with decrease in the tax levy. I'm not gonna recommend that or advocate for that at this time. If any further staff reductions um, or budget reductions, I would, I think we would be at a point where we would then need to begin to cut services at the same level. Um, so having us be at a pre-recession point with number of employees, and again, that high level of service that is still demanded of the employees, couldn't justify taking any more employees out of the 2023 recommended budget more than what we did. So that is the end of my presentation for you tonight. Is there any questions at this point? George? Uh, the Port Authority property, I know we, that the city owns and we've talked about it in our meetings as to why that property is taxable. I know it comes up in old Michelle and uh, Mike and Dana, you know, why is that, why is that property taxable when it belongs to the city? I agree. <laughs> um, it is, I just asked, wanted to verify with Lucy, it's part of a state statute that Port Authority property is taxed. I know the chair of the Port Authority has asked Lucy and I to look into that again. Uh, perhaps lobby for that. I'm not quite sure where that will go, but sure. I guess I agree. It is, it is in my mind a little bit backwards to institute a tax on a property owner. We're basically taxing ourselves to tax ourselves. Right. And so then, you know, also with these Dieter charts, and we did those in the past, as you look at you know the services like police and fire and library and park rec, all the opportunities that are there and the services that they uh, provide for the city, like the boat ramps and all those things, which a lot of people do not know who provides that service. But I say it's all essential for you know all of our services. To me, are essential for uh, you know making our town a good place to go. So, thank you. Mayor and Council, I just I just would note, um, and George, I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that again. Just with my years in the recreation department, I'll say this: that the hundred seventy thousand dollar home that we showed, the the monthly estimate is four dollars for recreation, hmm. and and that includes the boat ramps, the aquatic center, the East Rec uh, programs, the Sonic Temple Senior Center, Lake Park. Uh, Weed I, I could go on. Uh, mowing for four dollars a month that's you get it all so yeah. steve you had a question i do your comments really highlight to me when we look at the the levy the amount of the levy 10 million eight or 10 10 million something and lga 10 million three lga is increasing by 0.4 percent nothing almost nothing and it's it's when you hit that last chart with the yellow bars and that incremental 
levy increase, it, it just it just brought it into focus to me. I'm amazed our levy is as little as it is. Remember, we got the we got the, we got this a, a big pile of LGA money. We we rely on that money for for police and fire and all sorts of things that that we do need to increase. But our yet our our, our wage costs uh, increase and our our uh, so anyway, uh, you just you just uh, um um highlight. Thank you for your comments. You you highlighted that to me. And um, I, I think it should be entered in the testimony that that uh, um, I, I'm 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 amazed that our our proposed or our recommended uh, levy increase is as little as it is. So I, I think also we should mention it doesn't match what inflation is right now either. You know, D totally. That's my not point. even you close. Did, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you 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 put it into focus that that again the public should know and understand that that yeah there there's there's other money coming in here LGA which is really your tax dollars your tax dollars are coming back uh, to you that you that you paid into the state through through uh, a, a, a state income tax and that's money that's coming back to you. Uh, um, I, I don't look at, at I don't look at that as a benevolent gift from the from the gods in St. Paul. Uh, um, it's our money, and it's not increasing. Yet we're expected to to provide all these services, and 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 we do. Um, so, thank you for. And I'm trying to put this all in a focus for all of us, so we so we 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 get this. So, thanks, George. Uh, just to follow up on Steve's comments, as I mentioned in our budget sessions, that the city of Winona, and I've been saying it for the past eight years, 10 years, our businesses send about $27, $28 million to the state of Minnesota. Now, not criticizing the state, but like I say, we put the infrastructure in for the, for the Walmarts and the Targets and the Menards, and they produce a lot of sales. And I think just, you know, if, if we give 28 million and they do nothing for it, I don't think it's unfair to say, could we just have half of that back? You know, just my thought, just, you know, half back, we're, we're giving it to you and you do nothing for it. So outside of the roundabouts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions or comments? Yeah, Pam. I'm sure this is this is a bit redundant, but but as you were making your presentation, I did note that the electrical rate increases went up six percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, natural gas seventeen percent. Mm -hmm. Workers comp is up ten percent. So I too I I am following what Councilman Young said. I think we've done a good job with our budget. <laughs> Michelle, I, I do have a question about the electrical, though, because I, I remember vaguely that we signed on to a program that was supposed to keep our rate stagnant or less. And it seems like that is not happening for us. And I think the reason the council at that time agreed to that program is because obviously costs keep going up. So we hoped that that would keep us at the same level. What, what happened to that program? So Mayor and Council, I don't have a, I don't have a real full answer tonight. I can certainly look into that, but we've been working specifically with John Howard on staff, and I don't know that we fully realized that program yet. Um, certainly the solar was put in in certain locations, and, and we've worked through some billing cycles and reimbursements from Electrical, but I can certainly bring that back. But I, I, and, I think I remember like we didn't end up getting the full amount we were going to get because they couldn't fund it or they couldn't find locations or they didn't have enough people sign up. But I still expected us to see some benefit. But this reminds me vaguely of when the council agreed to do the, the sewage plant and there was all these promises and no outcome that was positive for us in any way. So I, I can say I was in John's office, John Howard's office on Friday, and he had a whole stack of Excel energy bills there. So he, he does review them and he is, uh, yeah, looking over those. No, not at all. But he is, you know, staff is double checking that stuff. Because it has been more than three years. I mean, that was over four years ago now, I think that we, wasn't it four years ago, approximately? So Brian reminded me that's that that program was about 20% of our electrical costs. It doesn't you know, cover across the entire city as well. So 
That's right. We didn't plan on for the whole yeah. thing, but I was still hoping. Maybe, maybe we did. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you could be right. Maybe that 7% is yeah. better than it could have been. Any other comments? No? Okay, thank you, Jan. Okay, Mayor and Council, uh, we'll kind of move into more of our traditional format uh, now, um, where we have uh, city attorney is on next, and then we go to department heads to review the budget. So again, just as a reminder, uh, Chris Hood will present to you in a minute, and then on to Tom Williams again, we'll indicate page numbers and things that you can follow along with, and then if you have questions of individual staff, and then as a reminder that at the end of each of these sections, we'll ask for a tentative approval uh, of that budget area. Okay. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to present briefly tonight. I will, uh, <laughs> I will be, I'll be brief because I know your time is valuable. So um, just to give you an overview of the legal services that we provide on an annual basis. Um, council, of course, sets the policy, but my office, along with the other departments, uh, implement the policy that the council sets. And so we provide uh, substantially all of the city's civil city attorney legal services per year. And then we also provide uh, the city's criminal prosecution services for uh, city-related uh, misdemeanors and gross misdemeanors. And that would include things such as DWIs, domestic assaults, ordinance enforcement, uh, and, and many other um, criminal offenses. In providing the services per year, we provide about, um, uh, you know, on average, between 4,500 and 5,500 hours of legal services per year. And in doing that, we have, uh, in addition to myself, we have three other attorneys that provide services to the city, uh, Mike Flaherty, Alyssa Harrington, uh, and Lacey Schumacher, all provide prosecution services, uh, as well as Sam Hansen, who is, um, who is uh, our paralegal in our Winona office. Uh, the criminal prosecution work involves approximately 700 uh, criminal prosecution files per year. Uh, usually that entails several jury trials, which may consume anywhere from three to five days, uh, as well as uh, many court proceedings, contested proceedings, hearings, the result of that is that on average, we have uh, probably twice a week, we have attorneys at the Winona County Courthouse uh, providing legal services for the city uh, in undertaking those criminal prosecution matters. That can be more or, well, it's not usually less. It's usually at least two days per week. Uh, it can be more, sometimes it can be three uh, and even four days uh, per week. Uh, in providing those services. So, uh, so it's, a, it's intensive and involves a lot of time. Additionally, we provide all of the cities or substantially all of the cities, general counsel, city attorney, legal services per year. And that includes uh, researching and responding to questions from the various departments uh, on a daily basis. Um, about half of the substantive legal issues or half of the substances, substantive agenda items that you see uh, biweekly at your council meetings involve work that, that I've done or that other uh, attorneys in my office have done in terms of, of putting documents together in cooperation with and working with the various city departments. The work that we do involves a lot of different subject matter as well. Um, we, you all know the saying, um, jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, for us, we're jack and Jill of all trades and have to be master of all trades uh, because the subject matter is so, is so broad. And that means that we need 
highly qualified, uh, experienced attorneys to, to do and meet the city's legal services needs. And like I said, a variety of different areas in terms of contracts, real estate transactions, uh, various land use issues, uh, development issues, uh, ordinance research and drafting, loan documentation, license agreements, leases, lawsuits, contested proceedings with state agencies. Um, it really, really does involve a very, very broad uh, spectrum of work. Um, it's enjoyable work and we love the work, uh, but it's definitely challenging work to do. So um, with that, you have my budget before you. The budget um, represents uh, and the way that the city has done my budget for the last uh, decade plus that I've been city attorney, as well as uh, when my predecessor, Rich Blonick, was city attorney, was that the city sets my budget based on the percentage of non-union wages, uh, the percentage increase for non-union wages that is set in the January of the beginning of this year. So the non-union wages that went into effect in on January 1st of 2022, that percentage then is the percentage increase in my budget then that becomes effective for 2023. So um, with that, I am. I know that your time again is, is valuable. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you've got other questions offline, always feel free to call me. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? Chris, I have one just primarily out of curiosity. How many cities does your office represent? We are city attorney for, I think, 30 cities. Uh, we're also general counsel for uh, a number of uh, different local governments, and that would include economic development authorities, port authorities, housing and redevelopment authorities, sanitary districts, um, those types of entities as well. And we probably have another you know, maybe 15 of those types of entities, public utilities commissions would be another one. Sure. I, I know that, um, you know, from what I've seen, uh, and I know you and I don't talk frequently, but I see your work uh, frequently. Um, a lot of times that work with those other cities is beneficial to us because it helps uh, our staff uh, understand uh, and potentially uh, get new ideas and or uh, see policies from some of those other communities that you work with. So I appreciate you sharing that information with us and allowing us to to use that as we develop policy throughout the year. So thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments, George? Uh, hi, Chris, George here. Uh, I think you may have explained at the port meeting, but uh, what is the fee for a phone call or what is the, or what is the limit for a phone call, 15 minutes? Um, f the port is, uh, on an hourly basis. And so yeah, the minimum increment of time is 15 minutes, the city's on a retainer. So, uh, there really isn't, uh, you know, the effective hourly rate really based on the amount of time is about $80 an hour. Uh, but the port has a more traditional, uh, legal services, uh, setup. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? I would move tentative approval of the budget. Of okay. We have a motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Budget passed, or tentative budget portion passed. Thanks, Thank Chris. you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council. Chief Williams uh, starts on page one of the revenue side. I'm just... Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before uh, we jump into the budget, I would first and foremost like to thank Jessica and Finance for uh, their unwavering help and also city manager, Chad Hubel for his help. Although I've been a police officer for many years, um, this is only, I think my third year budgeting. Um, and one of those was uh, 
midway through um, prior to the retirement of Chief Lostrak. Um, I haven't been doing the budget 72 years like George has. So, um, <laughs> just a, a brief recap, of course, police department, we have uh, 38, we're authorized at 38 sworn police officers. Um, we also have two administrative assistants uh, that are full time. We have a community service officer that uh, was converted from a full time position to a part time position, a uh, full time animal control officer. Um, so our employees are up over 40, um, all of which are included in our budget. Um, if you want to go right ahead and go into the income side of things um, and ask me any questions about that, our administrative, our, I'm sorry, our parking fees, again, those are generated by our community service officer as well as um, uh, alternate site parking tickets um, that are written. And... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. Can you say what number you're on? I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I probably jumped all over. No, well. you didn't. Just like the, um, you know, the if it's like 31821 or whatever the number is, so we can follow you. I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, I'm on page four. You're on page four. Page. Okay. So I'm on 35101 court fines. Thank you. Okay. And that's on page four. Four. Yep. Everybody find it? Okay. So our court finds, um, those are estimated, of course. That's, uh, I've just basically kept it fairly consistent at $70,000 of income based on the fact that that's the number of, uh, the amount of money that is derived from uh, state traffic citations, speeding, stop sign, semaphore violations, uh, failure to yield, uh, those types of tickets, minor consumption as well. Um, we get a percentage of those from the state, as does the prosecutor, the state of Minnesota, law library, and uh, we get a percentage. So basically that comes out to approximately 70,000, more or less based on the number of tickets that are issued throughout uh, the year. Parking fines, as I alluded to before, that again is based on the number of parking citations that are issued by our community service officer and peace officers as it relates to parking violations, uh, 10 minute parking, two hour parking, three hour parking, 12 hour parking, and then uh, the largest one, of course, would be alternate side parking, um, our favorite topic when we will be <laughs> discussing that probably in the next couple of months here, unfortunately. So total revenue on that, of course, would be about uh, 142 is what I think we have listed down there. Um, questions on that? George? George. Uh, no, Chief, no, administrative fines, those are no longer uh, used or... or no so I don't know um, how many of you remember many years ago, uh, Police departments were using administrative fines in lieu of uh, traffic citations. So, for instance, if a speeding ticket cost $170 on a state citation, we would write an administrative ticket for 40 and we'd get the entire 40. The state, of course, saw the entire state of Minnesota with the law enforcement going that route and saying we're not getting any money because now they're writing everything in the in the criminal code book or under the state law under administrative fines. And they put the kibosh to that and basically said administrative fines are no longer available. We, we cannot do that. Is that correct? Correct. That's ended. Okay, yes. Thank you. Any yeah. questions on all good? Okay. okay. So then if we move into the departmental expenditures, that's on page 32 of your book. And I'd be looking at salaries and wages, which is um, 1101. But then if we just look at the totality um, of the number there, you're at $3,759,645. Um, if you wanted a specific breakdown, holiday pay officers are paid um, for working the holidays per contract at a certain rate of pay. Um, overtime. Uh, we reduce that slightly uh, based on a change in schedule for our sergeants and also some different internal policies and procedures as it relates to time off requests and how those are staffed. Uniform allowance, again, is authorized by union contract in what they are given per year. 
in terms of their uniform allowance. Um, so our total salaries and wages comes to that 3,759,000. Um, Benefits is uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory. The only items that you may want to look at is be jumping down to 2232 clothing allowance. Um, the notation on there would be for new hire. You see a significant jump on that, uh, where in 2022, the original amount was $16,000. And this year I'm requesting $40,000. Uh, Reasoning for that obviously is we've had significant uh, turnover at the police department and um, it costs approximately $6,000 to equip a brand new hire uh, police officer with uh, their initial issue uniform. So that is everything that is pants, shirt, raincoat, winter coat, between season coat, ballistic vest, handgun, all their duty leather, um, everything that it, it requires for them to be equipped to hit the street as a uniformed police officer. So that's why you're seeing a significant amount on that. Um, if we have projecting eight police officers down at uh, $6,000, we're actually at $48,000. But some of those will be taken out. Um, hopefully we'll have those hired this year that will not be moving into next year. So that's why that amount uh, increased substantially. Uh, professional services, uh, one um, thing, yes? One second. Jordan? Um, what is the status now of uh, the personnel in the department? Um, as I mentioned, we're authorized at 38. Um, by the end of this month, we will probably, I think we'll be down to 32. And at the end of September, we will be down to 29. Uh, we have made job offers to three other three officers who will be swearing in on September 8th. So if you figure that out, we'll be back up to about 32. And then uh, we're backgrounding several other people with the hopes of hiring three more on or around the end of September or the first part of October. Um, it takes 12 weeks to fully train an officer with no experience. Um, so we've made some pretty significant changes in the department. Um, we've taken investigators and put them back in patrol cars because our priority is to respond to citizens calls for service. Um, so our applications are not coming in that quickly. Um, we've had them posted ongoing and with the last three, I don't believe that we've received any applications for approximately the last three weeks. Um, so we are doing the absolute best we can. There is uh, light at the end of the tunnel. We will provide services to the best of our ability. Uh, it may take a little bit longer for some lower priority calls and damage complaints and theft complaints. But again, we ask for the public's uh, understanding and patience as it relates to that. Um, our staffing will remain the same per shift in terms of officers and supervisors. Um, and we, of course, have uh, made the decision to temporarily not fill some positions, one being a deputy chief's position, which is an administrative spot and um, investigator position that uh, was member of the Southeastern Minnesota Violent Crime Enforcement Team. Um, but again, those are positions that ultimately when we get back up to staffing, um, we will be filling back up again. So get back up to that 38 officer mark. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions? Uh, if we move down to 3309 for other professional services, uh, the only thing of notice that I would probably put in there is that um, I have ballistic vests included in that uh, for our emergency response team. Uh, typically, we get reimbursed 50% of that amount that we ask for, at least we have in years past. They do expire after five years, and so every five years we have to um, re-up and replace those ballistic vests. They're much more expensive than the standard vest that's issued to an officer. They um, uh, just based on the amount of materials that are used for them and the tactical uh, reason for those. So we will uh, hopefully be getting reimbursement for those. Um, transcriptions, we I decreased that um, 
significantly. We haven't had to transcribe a lot lately. If we just, uh, if you want to go down the other line items, if there's anything that jumps out at you, um, feel free to ask me and I will attempt to explain it to you. Um, as I see that we're kind of getting backed up on our time here. Any other questions for Tom? Aileen? I had a question. Uh, we, um, this might be a question for Chad, but the um, only thing from the CIP that had made it into the budget were the two police cars. Can you remind me what the cost is for those? So initially we thought that they were going to be $41,000 a piece base price. Okay. Um, Amy found out that of course they, they went up. up. So we, we added 10,000 a piece. So it's 51,000 a car, uh -huh. which puts us at 102,000. I believe that's probably, that's on the last page. Um, that's at 102. And again, to outfit a squad is about $30,000. So you're approaching that eighty to ninety thousand dollar per vehicle. And are, and uh, my apologies for interrupting. The um, the reason we're adding two are and we're taking two and moving them to a different department. Is that correct? Typically, what happens is uh, the cars get used up so <laughs> so badly. We try and take the highest ones out of patrol and then reassign them to the investigators. And then the investigators' cars end up being sold on public auction. Okay. Sometimes we do reallocate them to other departments like library or friendship center. But mm -hmm. um, I have a car right now that's a 2014 that has 170,000 miles on it that was originally allocated to friendship. But because one of ours went down, it ended up coming back to, to the police service. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other no. questions? No. Mayor and Council, I just would note along that same line, Eileen, just and for the whole council, um, Jessica and I will, uh, will work with Amy um, after the budget process and really looking at, um, and it might take a cycle to catch up, but to purchase our vehicles late in the year. Because again, as Tom alluded to, we we really lost 20,000, I mean, in a sense, we lost 20,000 if we would have bought these earlier. You can't do that in a budget process, but we'll, we'll work with Amy on that to see if we can't kind of change the cycle of when we purchase so that things like a $10,000 per vehicle charge don't kind of in a sense hit us in a budget cycle. I'd move tentative approval of the budget. So, motion from Michelle, second from Steve. Any discussion? George? Just pass it on, Chief, to the rest of the department. <clears throat> we got a good professional police department. We're proud to have them. Thanks, George. I appreciate that. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Gotta follow that guy. The end of the night. Yeah. 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 I love it. You left you some money. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm going to give you a brief year in review of how things are shaking at the library. Um, so we have eight full-time staff members, including myself, an admin assistant, and a building maintenance staff person. And then there are four 25-hour per week staff members. And then after that, there's a handful of staff members that work anywhere from five to 15 hours a week. Uh, we're open six days a week, about 45 hours, six days a week, about 45 hours a week. Sorry, that sounded funny for a moment. Um, I'm happy to report post pandemic, people are coming back. We had 800 kids signed up for summer reading programming. Um, so the building is buzzing again. The computers are being used and <coughs> Printing is happening again, and so that's all good things. Um, there is definitely an uptick in the digital needs. Our We have about 22 hotspots now that stay checked out and have quite a wait list to use. Um, our Wi-Fi is in hot demand. Um, the, we have some digital subscriptions that we've added to help facilitate needs. So Hoopla is our newest digital subscription that is very popular. <laughs> it's been very well received uh, right out of the gates. So that's been a nice offering. 
Um, so I'm just going to walk you through. There are just a few changes in how we're budgeting. Chad mentioned um, a lot of them already, but I'm just going to point them out. Um, first off, I do want to point out that as Chad mentioned with senior advocacy, library funding also stayed flat from the county. Um, we have changed a few ways that we are taking in revenue. We used to take in contributions and donations as revenue. Um, we, to write the budget with accounting for depreciation and stabilizing uh, what we are bringing in for revenue, we are no longer taking in contributions and donations as revenue. Um, it was just too unstable to predict and also hard to honor the donor requests. Um, if people contributed to summer reading programming specifically, we weren't always able to transfer it out as quickly as we wanted to, to hit the right line item. And then we do have um, that sandblasting tuck pointing project with the ARP funds, um, which is gonna be even more important now that we have an issue with bats in the building and they think they're coming in through the broken mortar joints. <laughs> so it'll be great to get that done. Um, and then the other big project, of course, is the elevator, which is, we've talked about before, it's just way past, it, it owes us nothing at this point. Leslie, the children's department is fully open and Everything's taken care of down there. Fully open and staying dry. Yep, great. <laughs> See, two quick questions. Where are you booking that revenue then, that donor revenue, where's that going? And then th there was some damaged glass, I think, some of the glass tiles, if you could comment on both those things. Mm -hmm. Jessica, help me better explain the contributions, donations, revenue piece. Sure, so mayor and council, when we, when we receive revenue um, through donations, then Leslie and her staff fill out a, a transfer form, which we use to then increase the budget for both the revenue in donations and the expense line that the um, donor requested that their money be used towards. You're doing it basically donation by donation then. Right. We do it quarterly. Okay. But I got but it. That's right. You yeah. transfer it out immediately. So you're not budgeting for it. Right. Got it. Does that also mean then that the expenses are not really listed as expenses? Because if they write in that they want to provide 12 new books for the youth program, that wouldn't have been in the budget. But so, okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah. That makes sense. Because you're right. You could never account for that appropriately because yeah. you would never know. Okay. And regarding the glass tiles, we don't have resolution yet. We're still researching. Um, um, help me with the vendors. Garrick Holly. Will it Hauser. Will it Hauser, thank you. Um, has contacts with um, the company that he thinks made the original tiles out of Ohio. So we are still in process with, with piecing all of that together, so to speak. There's um, a still a small portion of the third floor stacks that is roped off. Oh, oh. Did, did they break from use or dropping things on them or age? Construction next door, I believe. No. Demolition? Uh, no. Well, we're still determining oh, exactly the full no. cause of the damage. Oh, no. Any other questions for Leslie? Up to this point, no. Okay, I would move for tentative approval of the library budget. Uh, motion from George, second from Pam. Any discussion, comments, questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, um, Mayor and Council. Just a clarification, just to be super clear: the library is still accepting donations. Yeah, I'm assuming <laughs> of, that that's the case. Of the and to come ever. in. Uh, we, we are just from an accounting standpoint in handling the donations differently, but we certainly still uh, love those that uh, see the library as a, a good place, place for their philanthropic endeavors. Is it also true to say then that it's more easy for that money to be identified and used for the intended purpose? Just out of curiosity, how much does a hotspot cost the, the library to buy? The devices themselves are, are very reasonable, under $100 a piece, but the, the trick is it's like having a cell phone. There's a monthly payment plan with Verizon. Got it. Of course. 
Related. We we honor donor intent to the extent that we can. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. But this just makes it easier for all of you. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Leslie. Now, Monica. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. And I have a wide assortment of different budgets, so I will just jump in. But I would note with my 11 years with the city of Winona, of Minneapolis and 24 in Winona, this is my 35th year of doing budgets. <laughs> she does them. You, you just sit there and listen. Okay. <laughs> just want to clarify. All right. No. Still trailing. <laughs> so on the uh, first page under the revenues, we have franchise fees for both cable TV and electric. Uh, we're estimating uh, no increase in cable TV. We're hoping that hangs on. Uh, we know there's decreasing um, uh, signups or, or, or uh, customers, but uh, hopefully with their increase in rates, so that revenue would be realized for 23. Uh, electric, we get a percentage of their revenue. So I, the 1.1 million is a, is a conservative estimate with increase in rates. The next uh, fees on 32101 is alcohol licenses. I am proposing a 3% increase in the alcohol rates. We haven't increased those in uh, three years. Um, the next one, the non-business permits 32211 is for used car dealers. <laughs> Not recommending any increase and it's a pretty unsubstantial amount of money. The next one, um, we do have a cell tower on city park property up on Windcrest and that lease has a cost of living increase built into it. So we're projecting for 23, I'm trying to find that number. <laughs> page four. 36, 209. Uh, yes. Page four. It's uh, 35,000 for um, that tower for next year. So those are all the revenues. Any questions on, on revenues? Nope. Okay. Then under general fund expenditures, the Charter Commission on page eight is sort of a holding um, budget. The Charter Commission has not met in over 20 years. Um, it is up to the district court to nominate people to be on that commission. We haven't had a request for them in a number of years. So if the city council were to um, want to have a charter amendment. Um, there are two different ways you can have that amendment completed. One is through the charter commission and one is through um, an ordinance. So we haven't had a charter amendment in a few decades either. So um, if you wish to reconvene the charter commission, that's why there's that hundred dollars there. I have a I ask a question yeah Eileen. just out of curiosity so do we roll that over every year or if we budget it and then never need it it just goes back into the general fund right. uh, res or reserves mm -hmm. the next one is on page 10 the human rights commission we have uh 550 budgeted uh, mainly to be members of the state league. And then the supplies are for their annual um, latch award. Uh, the next page is cable TV franchise management, ongoing, um, um, what's the right word, journey <laughs> to have our franchise agreement with Charter Communications completed. Um, and then there's ongoing work to manage the agreement with both HBC and Charter. I would note that 
we are 99% of the way to having charter upgrade the government access channel to HD. I'm not sure that it will be in HD in the September meetings, but it will be broadcast in HD in the October meetings. So charter customers who are watching the uh, council meetings on that channel will see a much better picture. And that has been a year in, in the progress. So. Very much shorter journey than the, the franchise fee journey. Yes. Steve. <laughs> Monica, yeah. could, could I ask if we go back to uh, the liquor liquor tax liquor mm -hmm. uh, beverage license? So you said how many years had it, had it been since we'd had an increase? I think the last time there was an increase was in twenty twenty, okay. and then we did not increase it in twenty twenty one or twenty two. Okay, there's been a tremendous amount of inflation. I'm just I'm just I'm just taken with the uh, you know three percent increase. Okay, it's an increase. But my goodness, you add up the amount of inflation we've had since uh, 2020, the last increase, it's way more than 3%. We, we have, why, 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 why are we just doing 3%? Help me understand that. Um, and we have associated costs with this. Right. So the, there is a cap on some of those licenses under state law. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact was mostly on the on-sale establishments versus the off-sale. Okay. And the off-sale is the license that's pretty minimal. So um, I, I'm not sure that all of those businesses are back to, I mean, they're, okay. I think now they are probably finally back to full capacity, but you know, there was two years of, of uh, um definitely losses for those businesses because of the reduced capacity that they could have in the establishment okay so all right thanks george and i believe also uh, some of those uh, establishments they they were totally shut down for six or eight months where they could do no business whatsoever then they came back on limited hours so uh i know we agreed as a council then to uh give this break to them on that. So, which was very, very much appreciated by all those establishments and the restaurants as well. Monica, can you talk real quick about food truck licenses? Um, have we seen any increase? We had, uh, I think it was last fall, we came through with the food truck ordinance change. Have we seen any increase uh, in food truck license applications? Uh, Mayor and Council, a shorter answer is no. Okay. There's actually fewer. As of today, there's only one that has the annual food truck license. Okay. So. Um, and when we see them operate in Winona, but it's just, is that a one day license that they're getting? Um, if you see them operating, ask them if they've posted their license and they probably have, don't have a license. Ah, okay. It could be that they're also licensed through like the farmer's market or, or Big Muddy. Those are different than what we're talking so about if, here. If you have an event that has a license agreement with the city that permits food trucks. So Steamboat Days, Big Muddy. Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market. Uh, farmer's Market. That's about it. Yeah. I'm looking for Patrick. Is that about it? Uh, craft Beer Tour. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if they have a license agreement for a large event, that event, the organizers are supposed to make sure that the food truck has the state food licenses. If they're not part of an event, they should have a city license. We have a one day, a seven day or an annual. Okay, thanks. But that doesn't also, that doesn't preclude a private business from having a food truck on their property. They don't need a license. Yes, they should. They do? Yes. So I'm going to guess that's the problem because they think they're inviting someone to come serve their employees food for the day, and they probably aren't applying for a license. That's my guess. But we all agree we want to see more food trucks. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> think I don't think I, I don't think we were going to see an increase just because we allowed them. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, a lot of people thought there was going to be all of a sudden like 100 food trucks 
in the downtown. And I was like, I don't think so. They're still only going to come if there's something happening. They're not just going to. Yeah, they're not going to just pull up. They were worried about our member. OK, uh, next one is on page 15, elections. Um, so for 2023, uh, there are no scheduled elections. However, we do have an annual equipment maintenance agreement for all of our equipment. So there's an annual fee that we have to pay. And Chad mentioned we're using ARPA money to purchase new <clears throat> voting booths and also a new precinct supply totes. I think the current voting booths are probably purchased in the mid 1980s. Well, I thought 80s. they were 76. Seven, sure. I'm not sure. And the totes were here when I started, and they're probably 30 years old. So, so I am looking to purchase a wheeled, not I don't know what W H L E wheeled totes, so that it's easier for the judges to um, tote those in and out of the precincts. And I would note, uh, as you probably have heard, the school board is looking to hold a referendum next year. So that will be 100% at their expense, but they will be using our equipment and likely they'll tap our roster of election judges. So I will assist to the extent I can with that um, election next spring. Can you touch real quick on what the special election cost us this year? Uh, the special May primary cost the city approximately fourteen or fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. And that's going to be in every presidential election situation now, correct? Well, the the special primary this year was for the congressional seat. Oh, right, right, right. seat. <laughs> but it would be a similar cost for the presidential primary, which will be in 2024. All right. Thank you for reminding me. I, yeah. I want to, you know, I want to be a supporter of Monica. Yeah. <laughs> then in uh, City Clerk, um, I really don't have any changes. And Central Communications, this is kind of a catch all budget that we use for a number of internal service activities that we run out of the city clerk's office, but are really for the benefit of all city departments. Um, we have a copy room here on the third floor. So we lease equipment for copying. We lease the postage machine. Um, we also have an enterprise wide um, document imaging system called Laserfiche. So that system, the annual maintenance is paid for out of this budget, as well as the um, telephone system that all city departments operate on with the exception of the police because they're at the LEC and then all of our postage fees and box fees and um, reply and maintenance also covers the copy paper. So I purchased copy paper, not from Scranton, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love it if you did. <laughs> so any questions on central communications? George, uh, I don't know if this is totally related to that, uh, but do we still buy uh, copy paper, the city and the county and the school district? I think Winona State, do we still all buy them together? Um, yes, we have a consortium of a number of different public entities Currently, it's City of Winona, Goodview, Winona County, Southeast Tech, and Cotter Schools. And we put out a request for proposals in the spring, and we get quotes back. And um, previous, well, years ago, it was for the full year. More recently, they will only guarantee the the rate for six months, but most of the entities would try to purchase their annual paper within that six months. Okay. Thank you. I'd move tentative approval if you're done. Nope, I have. Okay. One, one more. I thought here. So page 149 is public transportation. So that's the Winona Transit System. 
Um, I don't know how much detail you want on this, but the the increases in the operating costs are obviously primarily due to increase in fuel. We have a third party operator, their rates are going up next year because they need to pay their drivers more in wages and benefits. And we are also currently, as of May 1st, we added Sunday dial -a ride We also have Saturday service. So we currently operate seven days a week. So there obviously would be increase in operating costs. I um, am scheduled to find out from Minda at the end of this week. So I would say probably next week, <laughs> what percent of our requested budget they will fund for 23. I did request a half time position in transit. The other half was supposed to be general fund um, for a person to help do all the uh, marketing and management for transit. So hopefully MnDOT does fund that. However, I'm not sure how um, how likely it is that we'll be able to fill a half-time professional position, but we'll see what they do. And that's it. <laughs> now I would move tentative approval. I would second. Motion from Michelle, second from Pam. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Here's the good one now. <laughs> Lower the expectations, George. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the revenue side for public works and engineering and et cetera. Most of these are obviously estimates because we don't know we don't have crystal ball on how many permits we're gonna get. So halfway down page one, you've got sanitary permits, storm sewer permits, and we kind of go off historical values for them. Uh, keep going down the page, you have concrete licenses, right away, water, et cetera. Again, all historical. Okay. Pretty much the same on the next few with uh, grain layer, and flood elevation certificates. Uh, state aid maintenance, that, that's a for sure one. We do de we de do definitely get that. That's slated at 343,000. That's part of our, part of your gas tax money that comes in for our maintenance of our roads. Um, County 32 going on the bottom of page two. That's what we get from the county for the maintenance contract for maintaining County 32 uh, Gilmore Avenue Junction. Mm -hmm. On to page three, it doesn't look like I have too much there. Um, nope, there's, there's not, not anything there for mine. Ryan, just 34106 is yours. 30, did I miss one? Yeah. Yep. 34106. So that's what we get to pay finance, isn't it? Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> $335,000 from our sewer and water for them doing the billing. Thanks for the reminder on that one, yep. Chad. Appreciate yep. that. On page four. I am not seeing anything there. Uh, oh yeah, Dix Marine at the bottom. That's a fixed fee for uh, the lease of Dix Marine. They also pay us uh, gas fees depending on how much gas they sell. And page five, well, there's the gas from Dix Marine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's an estimated on the amount of gas revenues that they end up selling. Obviously during the COVID it was up a little bit and we're not sure if that's gonna continue at that, that rate. So now we will go to page 44. And we are in flood control. Um, from what I hear, we're not ever gonna have a flood again, so we shouldn't have to spend a lot of this money who are you talking to? I want to talk to that person. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
these are a lot of expenses. If you know, if we run the pumps, the electricity is definitely a big expense. We did not have to run the pumps at all this year until recently. We had to pump down the lake for the culvert project. We brought the lake down about a foot to help them out with that. But other than that, we did not run pumps this year. So it was a good year for, for flood. Brian, can you talk real quick? I, I remember seeing some documents regarding water usage for the Mankato Avenue project. Does that come out of the lake or Gilmore Creek or? Water usage, what do you mean? Well, I, I don't remember what the document. Oh, dewatering, uh, dewatering yeah, permit from a DNR. Yep. Yep. Uh, high water table around that project. Those aren't our fees. Okay. That, that's the contractor had to pump down for uh, the culvert there that they're doing, they do a lot of okay. pumping for that. Understood. Okay. And then the crossing underneath between Perkins and McDonald's, that's also high water table and we had to pump that down. Okay. Gotcha. Thank so that's you. just water table stuff. Yep. Okay. So now we are on to page 46 engineering. Uh, this is to staff the engineering department. Um, that's the first portion of salaries, benefits, et cetera. Most everything stayed the same. We don't have a, you know, an outstanding thing. I guess if you guys have any particular questions on this one, but uh, just basically our engineering department that runs all the projects and stuff in town like that. Any questions on engineering? Yes, Pam. You know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Sure. Yes. Okay. And I just had a question, Brian, on, um, with the the money coming from the county to maintain Gilmore County Road 32, yep. and the amount was twenty five five. Yep, is that enough? Do we do we? That's pay? basically for our plowing and stone removal. Um, we probably will bring that contract back to council sometime this year. It needs a seal coat slash uh, chip seal on it. We right. paved it. I want to say a twenty. 15, I believe we paved that. It could use a seal coat and, and crack seal. We're technically supposed to take care of that. I've talked with the county engineer. He's agreeing that we'd split that 50-50, but that would be an agreement that would come back to you guys. So yeah, generally that is enough to take care of that for plowing. Okay, because except for this project that you're talking yep, about. Yep, that's a bigger expense. And, okay. and when we pave that road, we split it 50-50 also. Okay, good, thank you. Yep. Uh, okay, so we are on to streets and alleys. Um, this is your street department. This is the, the salaries, wages, et cetera, for street department. And then obviously when you get down into the weeds of this, you're, you've got blacktop services, you've got um, concrete services, gravel, everything, salt, sand, everything that needed to maintain your streets, keep them clean, keep them plowed, all that kind of thing. Um, any questions on that? Eileen? Just um, among all the departments that fall under this that we're going to go over, how many total employees do we have? S street department's got 11. 11? Yep. Okay. And engineering? Uh, engineering is kind of the uh, alphabet soup because the, they're paid out of sewer, water, storm sewer okay. general fund so mm -hmm. i'm not sure what what the number is exactly on that one so mayor and council either jessica has that or it may be in your yeah it's not, that's on the ring first part here. of the yeah, it's, program it's 4.35 in engineering and it's on chart five which is the page right before the pink page oh okay great Thank you. Yep. I was just curious how many total yeah. people we had. Thank you. George, do you have any questions on that one? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, did we have any questions on the street department in general? They do a good job. Eileen, do you have another question? No. Oh, good. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Next is our street lighting budget, which is 
basically a repair of street lights that are city owned. We own about 5% of the street lights and XL owns most of the rest of them. Um, the other biggest expense at the bottom is electricity, basically almost a quarter of a million dollars for keeping the street lights on. That, and some of it also goes for our signals, but most, the majority of it is street lights. Central Garage, which is basically responsible for repairing all the vehicles, whether that's fire, police, street vehicles, sewer, water, park maintenance. Uh, most all the vehicles do get repaired in-house. I don't think they have to send too many out unless it's like a specialty type thing. So we've got a pretty talented staff that can take care of most everything. How many mechanics do we have up there? Three right now. Okay, and you're right, they're very talented, yes. Any questions on, Scott, did you? Nope, oh, nope, sorry. I saw the finger up, I didn't know for sure. You should see me at an auction, it's trouble. <laughs> it's sold. I'll say hi to someone and I'm spending money. We bought something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On to public works, which is, Again, this one shows a portion of it, but a lot of the salaries and stuff like that are paid out of sewer, water, storm sewer fees as well, because obviously it's a menagerie of responsibilities. And our next one is Public Works Trees, which is our tree crew. Again, another great crew that does a great job. They're taking care of uh, all the tree trimming, doing a lot of the ash borer eradication of the trees that are gone, you know, that are too far gone to still inject, which the injection project did start today. So you'll see Rainbow in town starting to do some of the injection, or not Rainbow, I'm sorry. Uh, it was Sergeants out of Rochester that is doing the injection this year. Um, Right now we have four on staff for the tree crews and that's what's included in the salary wages, et cetera, for these. Any question on trees or public works? Brian, how are we looking over at uh, the compost site? That was our next one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. Um, right now it's looking pretty good. Um, I've heard compliments for Jeff's services there. I have not heard too much for complaints. So, so far, so good. Okay, thank you. George, you had a question? Yeah, it's, it's good to see Chris Kramer back uh, full-time again there. Chris is a great guy to have on staff. Yes, he's, he he's a go-getter. Yes, they are out there as soon as there's a storm. I mean, middle of the night and they're clearing streets 2, 3 a.m. They're doing a great job. No, Pam, you had a question? Yes, question on trees. Uh, through all grants grants that John Howard has gotten and through programs in the last couple of years, the city has planted a lot of trees. A lot of trees. Right. And that's a, that is a very good thing long term. Are we, how are we able to take care of all of those trees uh, if we are uh, uh, down an employee or two in the tree department? Well, this year we had Green Corps people that we had Abby and... Abby just got replaced by another girl named Abby, ironically. So they've been taking care of the watering and the planting. More or less, our staff wasn't doing the planting. It was the Green Corps people. And now we have another Green Corps person that's going to continue the watering and, and some planting and maybe some eradication of like the buckthorns and stuff like that. So we've been fortunate to, to have free staff do it. Right. So that, that's definitely been a, and she, the yeah. new Abby's on staff for almost a year. So we'll have her into next year too. Great. Good to hear it. And they also did tree inventory. Yep. I remember. Yep. Yeah. Tree inventory. So what you're saying is we could take a lot more donations for trees in the city. Because we've got someone to plant. Well, the new we, Abby. we could do adopt the truck, stuff like that for public mm -hmm. works in general. Oh, we okay. got all kinds of ideas. Okay. <laughs> Get on it. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I think we kind of covered the compost site. That is a yearly contract. Um, today's tree service has a contract for another year as of June. 
So that'll come up next year and then we'll decide with council on how to pursue that. Uh, park maintenance, I probably won't do that one. So our next one will be uh, page 100, 401 account. Is everybody there? All right, the 400 is more or less our projects are the sidewalk project with this one. Um, the first project you get to that is both the accessible and the non-accessible, which is the city owned project portion, which is either next to city owned parking lots, city owned property or curb ramp intersections. Um, it would be one eleventh of the town and I believe we're, I think we're east of Franklin next year, but I had to check for sure. Um, the also on the expenditure side, obviously you guys know that we shifted Baker from this year to next year. So you'll see the Baker Street expenses in this one also. And I, I will bring up the alley improvements. You know, we've talked about that for years. It, it did, unfortunately didn't make the budget again this year. Um, it just, it is what it is. So towards the bottom, state aid for Baker Street, like I mentioned, it got pushed to this following year. We'll rebid that early in the spring and hopefully get better bids. Are we seeing any change in asphalt prices or? Uh, asphalt prices from last year are definitely up, but they've remained flat through the summer. It, Asphalt is extremely dependent on oil, yep. but I think the other things that are affecting a lot of these construction prices are wages and availability of other sure. materials in general. Water main, like pertinences, hydrant, stuff like that are still nine to 10 months out. So I've heard a rumor that County Road 21 is going to be repaved with concrete next year. I know that's kind I've heard of... that too. I have not seen facts on that. Yeah. Okay. Is that, I mean, why would, is concrete less expensive right now than asphalt or doesn't fluctuate as much maybe difference we have in town versus like a county road 21 county road 21 is basically a clay base okay in town we're sand base okay our blacktop lasts a lot longer than it would on on county 21 your concrete will bridge bridge that type of material a lot more than a blacktop blacktop's a flexible pavement yeah. so when you're when you got your freeze thaws and your road goes like that in the winter and kind of smooths out in the spring, it, that doesn't happen with concrete. Concrete will curl at the corners. So that's, there's pluses and minuses with both pavement. Concrete obviously will bridge more than blacktop. Blacktop will flex more than concrete. So it sure. depend, depends on your substrate. We're all sand. We're sand 50 feet down. So that's about the best. So it has full generally a better. Yep. Okay. It's not necessarily better, but it's more bang for the buck. It's just cheaper product. And we still get the same life out of it okay. on the sand. Okay. That was probably way too complicated. No, that's <laughs> great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, next portion is the engineering dep department projects. Um, yeah, tax revenues and uh, LGA for the first page 105. Again, these are the expenditure or revenues that will come in for Baker Street and then get transferred out for Baker Street on the revenue side. As you get down to the middle of page 107, that's the accessible or the uh, non accessible portion of the sidewalk project, curb and gutter, et cetera. And yeah. And Brian, that fluctuates, right? So we'll see it kind of go up and down depending on what it depends on how much is out there. It's one of those things very similar to the uh, mill and overlay project. We'll do whatever money is available. If if there's a enough money, we'll do more. If there's not enough money, we won't. We're pretty flexible that way. Okay. And there's you know there's a lot of needs out there, and we'll do what we can with the money we were given. Okay. Thank you. And 
I guess it brings us to the next page, uh, the next portion, 410 Street Reconstruction, which is our mill and overlay project on page 110. Uh, 500 and basically 551,000 is available for this year's, which is up from the 365 from 2022's money. So nearly a $200,000 increase. So you'll see a few more uh, blocks of streets done next year. Um, as of right now, we'll have to assess which ones we'll be doing. We had possibly thought about the Parks Avenue because it was so beat up with the with the Mankato Avenue project, oh, yeah. but I am not going to guarantee that one at this point. Okay. So Steve, you answer my own question. Okay. Thanks. Very good. No, no questions. Steve. No, I'm good. Okay. Hey, yes, yeah, George. Just one question, Brian, yes, or for finance. How much do we, do we receive from the state for state aid uh, streets? About a million. About a million, okay. And, and then there was that 353,000 that was for the maintenance allocation. So then that goes straight into the general fund and gets spent more or less out of the tree department. Okay, thank so you. About 1.35 million. Okay. Our next one is High Wagon Bridge, which is basically the boathouse licenses. It's not a, not a whole lot of revenue there. And our next portion is on 116, page, page 116. Is this the airport? Yes. Oops. Correct. Yeah. So that's just the um, debt service payments for the airport project um, when we re when we did the runway. I think it's also the T hangers a little bit too, when that revenue or that project, or is it still just I runway? Think, I think this one was just the runway. Okay. So next we get to uh, water fund on page 129. Yeah, see so you got that. So like our other departments, the first portion is uh, wages, benefits, and insurance, et cetera. The, uh, on page 132, you'll see a couple transfers out for the Baker Street. Uh, I think we can cancel the Mankato portion because that'll all be paid this year. The 200,000 will be paid this year. So that'll come out. The major project that the water department is being done this year with the filter rehab. Um, the projects for next year are on page 135. We have well 19 rehabilitation. It's just, we do basically on a eight to 10 year cycle of our well pumps. We pull them and then rehab whatever we need to in that pump. And the other one is a $300,000 Louisa Street water main extension. Um, some of the water pressures on the East End businesses, peerless, et cetera, could use a, another feed, and this would provide another feed for both their use and for fire protection. Other than that, water departments more or less stays the same. Steve, do you have a question? Okay. Going on to sanitary sewer, starting on page 141. First portion again is uh, wages, salary, benefit. Yep. 
The Baker Street transfer out on page 144 is replacing the sewer along Baker Street, something we've predominantly done with our state aid projects. Um, most of our sewer and water is 80 to 100 years old on these projects, so we're <laughs> replacing where we have a convenient time of the road being open like that. <laughs> The extremely big one that you'll see on page 147 is the project that will replace and upgrade our building, our collection building, uh, about, about a $4 million project that is in your CIP. Um, this is kind of a precursor to the phosphorus mandate, but it's also a building that needed as electrical and other things upgraded because it's honestly it's dangerous at this point because it's a very caustic environment with the sewer it eats copper like it's lunch so that that's definitely something that's a safety concern as well as you know it's built in the early 80s so it's due steve could i could i ask on that so you identified that know, maybe a year ago that that was coming. We've yep. budgeted for it and we're probably using some reserve knowledge. We will, we will be using some reserves. And as, as Chad mentioned in the beginning of the, the thing, we are increasing fees by the 3% and we're adding the excess accessibility charge of $5 a quarter. So people's bills will probably go up around seven, $8 a quarter mm -hmm. on average. Okay we're planning and building in for this phosphorus mandate that's that's coming we, in yep. 28 there, there there will be we've estimated increases okay. in the next few years all right and and jessica maybe this is for you so we 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 believe that we're even with 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 this building which is significant the phosphorus mandate that the increases we're building in and uh, that that we should maintain our reserves and and keep doing what we're what we're doing, we won't run into a disaster on this at some point. So this will reduce reserves. So we we won't maintain them, but we'll build them back with the increases um, in the fees that we're recommending. Step back with the uh, with the expenses, and then and then uh, re regain it forward. Right. Okay. Thank we're you. We're estimating that we'll have to bond for this project at some point, not this project, the but phosphorus for the phosphorus. Thank you. Okay. And we're also estimating that we should receive a fairly large grant on it, upwards of $8 million. Oh. It's kind of the classic that they're giving out for this. So okay. Thank it's, it's going to be ugly. But I knew it was coming. It, I knew it's, it's really big. Yep. That's what I'm trying to understand. We're, we're trying to get ahead of it, but uh, we're going to be behind before we get ahead. I get it. Thanks. Okay, I think we're done with sewer. So on page 156 is the airport. Could, could I could I mention one thing? It's mm -hmm. just so critical to understand. The greatest safety device in human history is sanitary sewer. It's why we're here. It saves millions of lives per year. I just I'm just thankful to live in a place where we have sanitary sewer. I've visited places they don't have them. Clean water. So I just needed to say that we, 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 we spend money on this. It's necessary, but what a, what a wonderful country we live in that we can afford a sanitary sewer. And I'm thankful for the people that, that uh, do that work. So those things need to be said. Yeah. We take it a second nature. Totally, but it, totally. you, if you go to a third world country and the, the lifespan of people is not nearly what we have. And that's basically for sanitary sewer Correct. And, and purifying our water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just need to say that once in a while. Uh, Mayor, yes. Uh, in regards to sanitary sewer, I think we have a couple of industries in town that uh, are big users of it, and they help keep our sanitary sewer bill down yep. by all the usage that they have with it. So, you're you're uh, freighter malt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to to date, you know. date myself a little bit. They're they're a right. huge user. Yeah, very. Some of your player. other ones. Your former employer is also yeah. a very large user. Yeah, and their usage helps keep the residential bill down. So without a doubt, without a doubt, the sewer usage. 
in water as well too. So yes, yep. Uh, airport fund. Um, a lot of our airport is funded by federal aid on this. We do have one employee that is full time out there, uh, does the plowing, does maintenance, stuff like that. Um, we do have a fuel farm possibility project out there, but that's if and only if we get grant money. So this uh, on the top or near the top of page 156, you'll see that $90,000. If we do not get the, the grant, that goes away. Can you define the fuel farm for us? Uh, there's, is a self-serve thing out there? We would put a new fuel farm out there, and this would be kind of like you go to Quick Trip and you'd be able to swipe your card. Okay. Right now, you pay George. Sure. It's not quite as automatic as you as it could be. Okay. But it's it needs an upgrade too. Okay. Thank you. Uh, page one eighty two, storm sewer fund. This is uh, funded mainly by our storm sewer utility revenue. You'll see highlighted on the middle of page 182. This, this one we're pretty solid on reserves, Jessica, correct? That's right. We do pay portion of, like I said earlier, portion of engineering, public works, uh, natural resources coordinator is paid out of storm sewer, not 100% of their salaries, but there are portions of that. And that's what you'll see on page 184. Storm sewer also gives some to finance and some to uh, Streets Department for street sweeping, et cetera. No major projects are scheduled out of, out of here this year. And on page 186, you can see that um, we're putting money into reserves um, to the tune of $99,000. So page 235 is the last thing on my schedule. So mayor and council, I would just interject at this point, Brian, sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem. Um, if you can indulge us some patience, I think that tomorrow night we need to bring back the capital improvement. I can see two, two errors that we have within the, within the CIP. I'd like to bring it back tomorrow night. Just, we can either lead off with that or finish with that tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, and they're minor. They're just funding source and wrong dollar amount. I can see on a couple that we've shifted to ARP. So if you if you're okay, I'd like to bring that back tomorrow because again we've had we've made updates through this budget process and we need to update those now. Well, I would tentatively approve your budget. Motion from Michelle. Uh, before you vote, uh, it would be helpful in this case uh, if you could make an amendment to that motion to um, we go back to page 132. Tentative motion, if you could uh, simply point out that we are eliminating, mm. even though it is an inner fund transfer out, if you could indicate that you accept us taking out Mankato okay. Avenue to 406 for 200,000. Sure, I would amend my motion to identify that the 200,000 will be removed from this budget as it's paid out of this year's cycle instead of next year's. Second, the amendment. Motion from Michelle, second from Aileen. Any comments, questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yeah, do we have no, a vote on the original motion? Okay. Mayor, when this storm uh, utility 
came out. It was first known as the rain tax yeah. in the city of Winona. We received some national attention uh, for taxing <laughs> rainwater. <laughs> I still get calls about that, you know. Yeah, we this had is national the attention for the rain tax. I still pay it. And then everyone started to follow us. Okay. We will uh, go back to the motion uh, to approve the entire tentative budget. A motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Chad, you had something real quick? Uh, Mayor and Council, so just a quick reminder before we adjourn that we're back here tomorrow again at five o'clock where other department heads will wrap up our budget process and review. Again, CIP will come back. Um, again, if there are any adjustments uh, tomorrow night, um, we need to work through those before we adjourn. And then um, just for process clarification, if tomorrow night we work through the department head budgets and you tentatively approve, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, you can see that there are some minor adjustments like with advocacy, you'll tentatively approve that amount through revenue tomorrow night. And then we will, when it, when the budget, the next time you'll see the budget after tomorrow night will be at truth and taxation. And we plan to bring that September 6th. Um, and that will have the final uh, tax levy amount. And again, as a reminder, that's the amount you set. We can't go above that. We can make adjustments to go below. Um, and so that's really the, the next steps in the 2023 budget process. So we're back here tomorrow night at five o'clock. Very Do you good. need an adjournment? Is it's a, okay? This is an informational session, so okay, we don't just making sure. think I just said adjournment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just uh, we don't need official adjournment. Okay, that's what I thought. Very good. Okay. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks, staff, for being here. Appreciate it.